with faith. So we will, I like, I like interaction. So can you just turn to the person beside you? We're going to keep doing this and say, you can't stop now. You can't stop now. And turn now to the person who was your second choice and say, you can't stop either. You can't stop either. I came in this morning with a message that I believe is, uh, is timely, kind of stepping back from the uh, forgotten virtues and, and values for a little bit. We're not done there, but uh, I believe that the Lord's put this on our hearts, this message specifically, that it is a word for people here, for a specific person or people here. And I don't know uh, your uh, predicament. I don't know your circumstances or your situation uh, individually per se, but I do believe that the Lord has, has given us this word so that it can be shared to motivate, to encourage you, to unction you, not by my words, but by the Holy Spirit through a demonstration of his spirit in your heart. Don't give up. Press in. Press into the promise. Be persistent in the faith. Uh, I believe with all of my heart that in the beginning of this year, the Lord gave me a, a, a very just uh, in my face word that this is a year breakthrough as, as we were fasting and praying that this is a year that the Lord is going to do some, some mighty things in. And I'm not backing down from that word. And, and sometimes when the enemy hears something like that, the more we announce it, the more he, he tries to rear up his ugly head. But I'm just kicking him in the teeth over and over again. I, I feel like he's just smiling at me with his gums. So I'm just going to give him some black eyes. It, you know, I'm going to do it as many times as it takes. Um, because we have this word and we're holding, we're holding to it. But I believe that, uh, I believe that for some of us here, we're in a time, we're in a season that, that is trying, that is very hard. Don't stop short of the promise. Don't stop, don't stop short of your purpose. If you can open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. If you don't have your Bible, I always say, I'd love for you to bring your Bible so that you can get used to flipping through it and learning where things are. And, but if you don't have it, we do have it up here. So verse 36, it says, patient endurance is what you need now. <laughs> patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. There's another translation that says you need to persevere so that when you've done the will of God, you'll receive what he has promised. You know, you can, you can have a promise that God has given you, but never actually possess it because you don't learn perseverance. God can give you a promise about something, but you never actually possess that promise because you don't learn perseverance. I believe that's true in relationships. I believe that's true in the workplace. I believe that's true in goals that we may set. It's certainly true in our spiritual walk. It's certainly true in our, our spiritual growth and maturity. So I want to speak today to somebody who maybe you have stopped short. Maybe you're on the verge of stopping short and, and just say, keep going, press into the promise that God has given you. And so we're going to be in Joshua chapter six this morning. This is one of my favorite Old Testament books of the Bible. I love Joshua and just the man that he is and the man that he represents. He is what, what I see in Joshua, just like this man's man. But not only that, he's a man of integrity, of obedience, of faithfulness to God. He's definitely a man of persistence, of patience and perseverance. And there's just so many great qualities that we see in his life. And we're going to open up, again, Joshua chapter 6. This is an interesting chapter because it's describing how, how God's people, the Israelites, who have been, they've been led out of captivity. And this is now like, it's the second generation wilderness walkers, I call them. Um, the, God is, is describing through this, this scripture uh, how they're now to go in and conquer a land that's already been given to them. This has already been promised to them, this promised land, but they're called to go in and take hold of it now, to go in and, and go to war, to go in and, and conquer this land. It's promised to them, but they're not yet living in that land. In fact, there's, there's other people who are now encamped in this land. And I think about our Christian life, and isn't our Christian life very similar to this? 
Maybe a promise that God has given us that we feel is from the Lord, but we haven't yet, we haven't yet gotten that word. Scripture says that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heaven in Christ. So essentially what's that, what that's saying is like as co-heirs with Christ Jesus, what's his is also mine. So essentially the, the joy of God is mine to take hold of. The peace of the Lord belongs to me. It's a promise to me. The strength of Christ is also a strength that I'm supposed to be able to walk in and take hold of and have, have, have working out in my life. But isn't it very true, if you're like me, you don't have to admit this, you don't have to, to speak it out loud, but sometimes I feel like it's a promise for me, but I'm not yet walking in it. It's a promise that maybe God has given to me, but I don't feel like I possess it. Or maybe I do possess it, but I feel like whatever that is, maybe it's, it's the peace of God, like it's just remaining dormant for some reason. But according to scripture, taking God at his word, whatever is in Christ is also in me. Chapter six, verse five, it says, now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No, no one was allowed to go out or in. But the Lord said to Joshua, I've given you Jericho, its king and all the strong warriors. You and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. And on the seventh day, you are to march around the town seven times with the priests blowing the horns, blowing the trumpets. If you've ever seen a shofar, this is shofar warfare it's talking about right here. And when you hear the priests giving one long blast on that ram's horn, have all the people shout as loud as they can. Then the walls of the town will collapse and the people will charge straight into that town, into that city. So you're finally going to get what God's promised. What Abraham and Isaac and Jacob had heard about, you're finally going to get what, what Moses was never able to take hold of. It's yours, the promise is there, and you're going to be able to see it, and you're going to be able to walk into that promise. Moses was able to lead the people out of captivity, out of Egypt. He was able to part the Red Seas. The people walked through the Red Sea. The people were provided for. Man and quail fell from the sky. They were well taken care of. But because of the complaints, because of the lack of faith, they never got to see the promise that was given to them. But now Joshua, he's on the fringe of this promise. He's on the fringe of this land. In the first battle, the first place he gets to is, is Jericho. He's there, y'all. He's made it to the promised land. But I want to tell you or encourage you a few things that maybe we need to know that will help us in this battle, in this fight of faith, in this walk of perseverance so that we will not give up, so that we won't stop short. And the first one, our perspective can get blocked if we take our eyes off of God. Don't allow your perspective to be blocked. Have God's perspective. Don't allow your perspective to get blocked. How many of you, by a show of hands, you've heard of the story of Joshua and, and the walls of Jericho falling down? Maybe growing up as a kid, you, uh, you, you heard the song, uh, you sang the song you, you, in the children's church. This is a story for whatever reason. We don't get to hear so much on a Sunday morning. I love this story. This is a man's man's story. I'm going to sidetrack real quick because as we were worshiping today, I just got this vision. Maybe it's because I've been in, in the book of Joshua, but there's a place where Joshua tells his warriors, his soldiers, they've taken over a different, we're, we're venturing away just for a second from Jericho into another city in the promised land. And they've defeated this place and, and, and he grabs the leaders of, of that place, the enemy, and he tells his, his, his soldiers, he says, put your foot on the neck of your enemy. He, he throws the enemy on the ground. He says, put your foot on the neck of your enemy. This is not a children's story, y'all. He says, feel that? That's victory. That's what we have. 
If we're obedient to God's word and we have faith to believe, I don't care what it is right now that you may be going through, you've got victory. But you've got to have the perspective. You may not see it, you may not feel it, but if God spoke it, you've got to believe it. Put your foot on the neck of the enemy. So back to it. Joshua, the song. Y'all heard the song before? Who's heard the song? Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, right? Sing it with me. Jericho, Jericho. Come on. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. That's right. I'm embarrassed, so I know you probably are. I get it. I wouldn't have sang either. So we hear this song, though. And it seems like, okay, this is the first city that, that Joshua gets to. This is the first place that they're supposed to take. They're there now. Now what? You know, sometimes it's just getting started can be like the hardest thing, you know? It's just getting started. It, it, it's just seeing the, the first step. You, maybe that's true in health. You know, you want to... You want to go on a diet, you, you, you want to exercise, but it's just, if I could just get my shoes on, I could get there, but I can't get my, I just can't, no. I, I, maybe it's, you want to stop eating fast food, but, but man, on the way home, I just, I, I stop by Hardee's every day, it's just there, I just, it's easy. Maybe it, it, it's something that you've been dealing with that's a little bit deeper, like a sin or an addiction. Or something that you just, you want to begin to overcome. You want to stop, you want to stop doing that addiction. But if, if, it could, if I could just start. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is just to get started. The first battle is just getting started. You know, in this battle with, with Jericho, we, we, we read this story. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. And, and, and we get this perception. We perceive that, that okay, Joshua, he walked, maybe you know the story already. He walked around the walls for seven days and, and the walls came down. But it's much more to it than that. I think sometimes we water down the results. We water down somebody's victory or somebody's achievement or somebody's success because we oversimplify the process. You know, I, I, I was working out a while back with a friend of mine and he's a, a big guy, bodybuilder, wide, wide, strong, big muscles, uh, just you, you, you know, anyway, a guy walks up to him and, and uh, says, man, how is it that you got the way that you are? And this friend of mine, he's, he's just a very humble guy. He's like, and he just kind of breaks down his, his current regimen. He says, well, I do this, this, and this, this many times. This is and just real nice about it. But then the person walks away, true story. And he looks at me, he's like, that just frustrates me. I'm like, what? <laughs> what frustrates you? He's like, people come and they ask me that, but what they don't realize is I've been doing this for years and years and years and years, and they're trying to reap the results of what's taken me years to get. Isn't it kind of like that? You know, we oversimplify the process of what it's taken to get to that, that achievement or, or that success or, 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 or that victory. You see somebody and you're like, it looks like they don't ever go through a problem. It looks like they don't ever face any challenges or issues. They must just have everything. Just They've got perfect children. They've got a perfect wife. They've got a perfect husband. They must have a great job. They're always smiling. What you don't see is the behind the scenes. What you don't see is the years and years and years and years of tears and fears of overcoming, of claiming victory when it felt like defeat, of marching when it felt like they just want to sit down and lay down and give up. But they trust God. You don't see the pain. You don't see all the, all the stuff that they have to say yes to when they feel like saying no. But they move past their emotions and past their feelings and past their unforgiveness and past their offense into the victory. You see a warrior face. But it took some steps to get there. It took some marching to get there. Don't oversimplify somebody's process. Don't water down the results of the, you see somebody in their faith, aspire to it. Learn from it. Glean off of it. Paul says, do as I do, as I do as Christ has done. Follow the example, but don't oversimplify what it took for them to get where they're at. It's all about having that perspective. It's easy to look at somebody's highlight reel. You know, you see somebody on social media and you can form this perspective. You don't see what happens behind the curtain. You don't see the grind. 
It's important that we don't oversimplify that prospect, that process and that we have God's perspective in our march. And so we hear that with that song and, and, and we assume maybe it was easy for Joshua, right? Joshua just marched around this wall. But what we don't realize, we hear the seven day story. We sing a, we sing a real quick song. But see, Joshua, like I said, he was the second generation wilderness walker. He had to wait for the previous generation and their lack of faith and their lack of obedience to pass on before he was able to march into the promised land. He had to wait 45 years that led up to the six days. Don't oversimplify the story. It's not just a song. You know, Jericho, it's not that Jericho was such a, a, a big city either. Jericho was not this, this enormous city. It didn't have a, 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 a walls and gates that would keep these men marching for days and days. I mean, they could probably walk around it within hours time. But the walls were tall. The walls were intimidating. The walls were in layers. The walls were thick. And so God had made this promise, but how easily it would have been for them to be intimidated by the looks of what was in front of them. But see, the Lord had spoken a promise. He had spoken a word to Joshua earlier in, in the book of Joshua. Go home and read it, y'all. You will not be disappointed. You think it's boring, you're boring. Go home and read the Bible. Joshua is awesome. The story of Joshua is amazing. I promise you, you will not be let down. In the beginning of Joshua, Joshua, he's, the Lord tells him, be obedient, trust me, follow, obey my word. You will have victory. So he takes his word. He's not intimidated by the size of the wall. I wonder how often we see something and it looks so big. Maybe God gave us a promise, but we see the resistance in front of us. And, and so the, the opposition or the resistance, uh, it, it looks so problematic and it brings so much intimidation. So we don't even try. We don't continue marching. We don't, we don't press in. We don't persist. We give up. We stop short. How many of you know that God inside of you is way bigger than anything you will ever come across? You've got to stand on that. Don't let the appearance of something intimidate you to the point of giving up. You know, one of the great things about coming to church, about joining in with the church community like this, is that you get to come together in a community like this, around people who can help bring strength and encourage, around people who can lift up your arms when you're going through battle. You, you get to get into an atmosphere of worship. You get to hear a message that's hopefully uplifting and encouraging that, will, that you can draw strength from, that you can be refreshed in. There's this gathering that happens that, that is like drinking water. It just brings replenishment. It hydrates the soul. And we need that. Because I don't know about you, most of us, I think, spend five or six or seven days looking at walls. We go to our workplace and we see walls. We go into our families and, and we see walls. We see deficits, we see challenges. We see children who have struggles and issues and, and, and we have spouses maybe that we're just in a, in, a, in a battle there. We see walls, we see difficulties, we see challenges, we see, we see walls. And I'm so thankful that we have the ability now to have um, our messages on, on social media, on, on YouTube or, or wherever it is. But, but you know what's way greater than that? is being able to come to a place like this. If I'm watching through a computer screen, I can't get what I get here. I can't shake somebody's hand. I can't have that contact. I can't get that one-on-one -on -one prayer. I can't go and just fall prostrate before God and maybe somebody's judging me. I hope you're never judging me when I fall prostrate before God. I hope you're not judging me. If I cry an ugly cry, just, just keep smiling at me. Because sometimes when I worship God, it looks a little bit different then you may then you may think it should look but that's my worship don't let it bother you please pray for me but i can't get that through a computer screen you know if, if i think of my, my pastor or or my church is through a computer screen i'm highly mistaken 
If you're sick, that's one thing. If you're on vacation, that's one. But if you got the opportunity to come to church and get plugged in to a, a group of people who love you, a community that can encourage you, a worship team that goes to battle for you, a word of God through whoever may be sharing it that, that can lift your spirits, you never know what can happen. Maybe it just feels like routine in the moment, but you don't know what God can do if you give him that moment. I, I love being able to come together with you all and worship. There's something about praising God in the midst of a problem. And when, when, I, when I have a, an army right beside me that, that elevates my perspective, that gives me a God-like perspective, that helps me to see God rather than me, that helps me to see above my problems, that helps me to see above my circumstances. All I saw all week long were walls. Now I have an opportunity to look above those walls to realize that I can march around those walls and God is a miracle worker. He is a supernatural, he is the one that can bring those walls down. Maybe I've been beaten and beaten and beaten and beaten at those walls and seen nothing. But now it's time to just trust, have faith. 45 years we've been marching. Now it's time just to believe God. Let's go. Chapter 6, verse 1. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. Only God can speak past tense about a battle that has not yet been fought. That's how big, how strong, how confident God is. He's not worried. He's not stressed out. He's not taking any, any kind of anxiety medicine. He, he, he's, he's not scared. Whatever the problem may be, God is bigger than that problem. He's confident in himself. And he's calling us to be confident in him as well. Now I've written the birds of the air. Jesus tells the people, he says, the birds that they need for nothing, right? Whatever they, they need, they have it. They need food, they have food. They need provision, they have provision. But how many of you have ever seen an adult bird perched in its nest, looking up with its beak open, just waiting for God to drop a worm? It doesn't happen that way. They still go out. They still go after it. God, he's, he's the provider. He's the promise keeper. If he's given you a promise, he is faithful to his word. But sometimes it takes some persistence. It takes some perseverance. I trust God. I believe God, but I also go and I grind. I trust God at his word, but I also go out. I pray. I trust. I believe. I take God at his word. Right? I don't just wait with my beak open and say, all right, God. If you've been asking for financial provision, Go out and start filling out some applications. If you've been asking the Lord to help you through a tough time, stop speaking death over your life, over your marriage, over your children, over your circumstances. Speak life. I may see the opposite. Speak life. Go after what you want. Go after what that desire is. Go after what God has promised. And don't stop. Trust God at his word. He's faithful. He is faithful. Believe God's victory will prevail. <laughs> verse 1 looks nothing like verse 2. God says, you've got this. Joshua's like, I see walls. But Joshua, you've got this. All I see are walls. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt like, what you see in your life doesn't match up with what God's spoken in your heart. Have you ever felt like God is speaking a victory for you, but you feel like you're walking through a defeat? Or you open God's word and, and you're reading about scripture of healing and, and you're declaring that over yourself, but you feel so broken. Or maybe the Lord's given you a word that you're supposed to go and, and bless somebody. You're supposed to be generous above and beyond in, in a certain thing. And you know God's telling you that. But in the meantime, 
you're struggling to make ends meet for yourself? Have you ever felt like maybe God is telling you to go and to share your testimony with somebody, to share your story, to tell somebody about his goodness, but you struggle with your own doubts? Have you ever had to trust God when what you see doesn't line up with what, what you feel? When the revelation of what God has shared with you doesn't match your current reality? I've been there. I've felt that way before. That's Joshua right here. <laughs> That's why God sends the preachers out in front, the priests here in the Old Testament. I'm not talking about me. I need a preacher too, you know. But, but he sends out the priests when they're, when they're marching. The priests are going before those who have the, the ram's horn, who are, are declaring the victory. He says, go before. This is not a battle of flesh and blood. The warriors with the swords, I'm not sending them out in front right now. I'm sending out the spiritual. I, I, I'm sending out. Do you, hear, do you hear what we're saying right now? Sometimes I think we're not seeing what we think we ought to see. We're not looking at what we should be looking at. We're not. It's time to get God's perspective, y'all. Again, that's why I think it's so important to have, have a church community you can get plugged into. People that you can serve with. Seeing past your walls, past your perspective, past, past ourselves. Believing and being a part of something that's bigger than us. So God speaks to Joshua. He says, march around the wall six days. And on the seventh day, march around seven times. It's going to be awesome, Joshua. These walls are coming down. The walls are coming down. Joshua chapter 6, verse 6. Verse 6, if we have it up there. I'm going to try and be quick with this. Because I, I, I've, got, I've got quite a bit. We're going to start with verse 6. And we're going to try and read through verse 14. Then Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the Ark of the Lord. Verse 7. And he said to the people, Proceed and march around the city and let him who is armed advance before the Ark of the Lord. So it was when Joshua had spoken to the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpets so the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed them. Verse 9. The armed men went up before the priests who blew the trumpets in the rear guard and came after the ark while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. Verse 10. Now Joshua had commanded the people saying, you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, shout, then you shall shout. That's important. So he had the ark of the Lord circle the city going around at once. Then they came into the camp and they lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. Then seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them. But the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. And the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. So they did this six days. So they did this for six days days they saw nothing for six days they marched for six days they saw nothing scary thought if i were god and thank the lord i'm not i would probably give like some kind of encouragement to my men some kind of motivation like all right you march around once something's gonna happen you guys are going to see something so that you keep on marching. But God doesn't give this. And Joshua doesn't share any of this. It's like, all right, you march around one time, there will be an incremental part of that wall come down. A seventh of that wall is coming down. It's like a big game of Tetris. Just keep on marching. Or you got this. God. So that they could look up at that wall and they could, they could be excited and they could keep pressing in. They would, they're motivated. There's an encouragement there. They're seeing something happen. They're seeing progress. And I don't know if your mind works like mine, but I love seeing progress. If I got to work hard, I'm going to work hard. I don't mind sacrificing and I don't mind putting up with stuff. 
But I got to have some kind of point to what it is I'm doing. I, I, I like to see progress. I know I, I like to know that there's a purpose in the pain, right? But these guys didn't get that. Joshua said, march around the walls one time every day for six days. You can't talk. You can't speak. You got to stay quiet. Shut up and march. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what Joshua was telling these people. And I don't. Again, know about you, but for me, like, I like putting myself into the intensity of the story, like seeing myself in the scenario with these, these warrior men, these men who were ready to go to battle, these men who had swords on their sides. And they get there and they're ready and then they just march around for, they're just marching, not talking, just marching. And then imagine you go back to your home or, or to your camp, right? And I get back to Jess, my wife, and she's like, Hey baby, how you doing my warrior man? How you do how many people you kill today my warrior man? Yeah, my big strong warrior. How many did you kill? We going into the promised land, baby? We going to Jericho today? And I'm, I'm just like, no, <laughs> you know, I, I, think, I think it was more like, I think Joshua kind of has this like in preseason training right now. Like, he just had his marching today. He just, had his, we couldn't, we just going around the, the walls. I, I got ready to grab my sword and the guy beside like, <laughs> so I just, we just, we just marched, you know? And then day two comes and you get out there and you're marching and you, you march around these walls again and you get home and there's Jeff. She's like, what about today, baby? Like, Somebody needs to talk to Joshua. God, I don't know if he's crazy or what, but he won't even let anybody talk to him. He won't let anybody say anything. And I think the reason for that is because 45 years prior to this, there were some spies that went out into the promised land. And they came back with this negative report about giants who would decimate them if they tried to enter in. See, I think Joshua knew that when God speaks promises, the enemy would love to distract, to deter, to discourage, to, to destroy that promise. I think Joshua knew that it's in those moments that our words have great power. So just stay quiet and march. Don't allow your words or your thoughts to be exposed right now. Just trust God. Just trust him. March. Go. Persevere. Go forward. There's breakthrough. So three days goes by. Four days goes by. Five days goes by. Six days. Days go by and still no action. And you know, it, it's interesting. If you read through the story, Joshua never tells the guys like, all right, five days and we're there. Five more days. He doesn't give them that. He doesn't, he doesn't tell it two more days and, and we'll be there. He didn't say how long it would be. And I think that's one reason that oftentimes we may stop short of the promise because it just seems so open-ended. We don't necessarily see a finish line. We don't know that the healing's right around the corner. We don't know that the restoration in our marriage, it's, it's right there. We just got to march one, just a little bit farther, just a little bit long. We don't, we don't, we don't know. It just seems like so open-ended. Sometimes you just got to trust. You just got to believe. And I, I, I work, uh, uh, again, my, Joshua brings up some great illustrations that come from the gym. I know it just seems like a lot are coming. It's just Joshua. There's, there's a, a guy that I work with sometimes, work out with, and, and he knows that I need to know the workout before the workout happens. If he tells me what we're going to be doing, I'm all about it. If he doesn't tell me, I'm a big crybaby and complainer. Like If he tells me, hey, we're, we're, we're going to jog a mile, I'm like, okay, let's do it. I get on that treadmill. Like I got a tenth of a mile left. I'm a I'm going to rock it out real quick because I know there's a finish line. I see the goal. You know, if he says we're going to do planks for 45 seconds, I'm like, all right, we got this. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, oh, you know, we got it. Yeah. But if he doesn't tell me how long it's going to be, I'm like on second 20 and I'm crying. I'm like, this is, we've been doing this for five minutes. It just, it seems so open-ended. You know, the crying and the complaining, they go along with it. 
This is, this is open-ended right here. Joshua does not tell these men that tomorrow is the day. He just says, march. I think sometimes God allows that to happen. He doesn't put a clock. Wouldn't it be great if God put a clock on our dreams and on our prayers? I think there's a reason that he doesn't always do that. Like, if I could just say, all right, I see all my friends, they're, they're around me getting married and, and having babies and stuff. And it's looking all, God, when's my time, God? When's my time? You got two years left. And then you're going to meet your spouse. Oh, two years, God. I, I can do that. You know what? I'll raise you. I can do it two and a half, God. Two and a quarter, God. Two and a quarter. But I can do it, God. You know, if you know, it's easy to, but they don't, they don't have that here. And I think a reason that, that they don't and sometimes we don't. God didn't want Joshua and his men to put their faith and their trust and their own progress and their own efforts. He wanted a complete trust, a complete faith in him and his promise. They were called to persist. They were called to press in. Do you trust him? And we just got to ask that, right? Like, do you trust God? Can we trust him? Can we persevere into the promise? Can we believe? I believe this is a year of breakthrough. I believe that whatever it is, I know that God has something mighty in store. We've seen God do mighty things already. And it also has to do, what are we looking at? Where are our eyes going? Do you realize and I know I'm talking quite often about certain things that are happening right now, but do, do, that are happening here locally in our church, which is, do you realize last year with the Hope for Appalachia group, we raised 300 packages and we were like, man, that's awesome. This year you all have raised 1,500 Hope packages. Like that's 1,500 children that are receiving. I mean, that's awesome. It is. But in that... That's 1,500 children that are receiving the gospel message that we're able to go into the schools in April, starting on the 16th and, and, or the 15th, and for a week telling these students and the teachers the gospel message of Jesus Christ and giving them a tangible love gift. Last week, we talked to you all, said, hey, we need 100 cans. It's going to a local food pantry. They're in need. They don't have much going on. They, they need to be refurnished. They need to be restocked. Four days, three days go by. We have double <laughs> what we've asked for and people were still bringing in cans this morning. We still got one week left. A can represents a mouth getting filled, a belly getting food. There is poverty in our own town and surrounding. There is pain, there is lack. And we get to be the hands and the feet. So what are we looking at? There is breakthrough in the body of Christ. There is motivation. Keep persevering. Don't let it be all about you because if you keep looking at your current circumstance or situation, you can get very easily discouraged. For Jesus, nothing was about himself. How great the victory. We have so many opportunities that are all around us. This out of darkness, suicide awareness walk that's coming up. Rise against hunger right around the corner, March 16th. Opportunities to be hands and feet. Every Sunday morning here in our church, opportunities to pray for one another, opportunities to see beyond our own perspective and situations and circumstances and stuff and see with a godly vision, from a godly vantage point, to see beyond the hurt and into the healing, to trust in a way that's much bigger than ourselves. Will you march just because God says to march? Not because you saw progress, but because God said. <laughs> We don't always see progress in our, our present circumstance. We don't always see it right now. 
If I could eat a piece of broccoli and I got an ab form up, I'd be popping broccoli like it It doesn't work that way. There are some of you who are here right now because somebody has been praying for you for over 20 years. When you were in your drunken stupor, they didn't stop praying for you. When you were living a drug-infested life, they didn't stop praying for you. When you had backslidden over and over and over and over, they didn't stop praying. When you went to the rehab, they didn't stop praying. When you ran out of the rehab, they didn't stop praying. When you were stuck and, and you were isolated in your own depression and you wouldn't let anybody in, they kept praying for you. When you kept rejecting their offer for help, they kept praying. And I believe there are people who are here today because there's somebody right beside you. There's somebody around you that's been praying and they didn't stop praying and they prayed for years and they prayed for years and they prayed for years and because they didn't stop, now you know Christ. Now you know the power of perseverance. Now you know the power of breakthrough. Now that you know salvation, now you know restoration. Now you know God's grace and his love. Now you know. So there's going to be time where we don't see the progress, but we trust God in the process and we believe him at his word with the promise. It's not always in the moment what God wants to do for us, but I think oftentimes it's what God wants to do in us. Sometimes maybe we're walking around walls because what, what he wants to do must come before what we want to see. Don't stop. Let's stand. And do we trust God that, that his ways are higher than our ways? That his thoughts are higher than our thoughts? That his will is greater than our own? Sometimes things are going to happen that no other person can explain to you. There are things that happen that I'm not going to understand sometimes, that I'm not going to have an answer to sometimes, that don't seem fair sometimes. But we've got to understand, we see what's right in front of us, God sees forever. Like where we see the next step, God sees the full picture. And those are the moments and the times where we've got to trust God at his word when he says, I work all things together for the good. It may not seem like that right now, but you've got to trust me at my word. I am faithful. Even when we are faithless, I am faithful. I am God. My ways are higher. My thoughts are greater. You've got to trust anyway. Believe anyway. And know that the breakthrough, there is the breakthrough. Can we trust them together, church? Can we believe together? I'm believing for my family. I'm believing for my community. I'm believing for my church. I'm believing for my children. There are things I'm praying for. There are healings that I'm praying for right now. There are salvations that I'm praying for right now. There are restorations and marriages that I'm praying for right now. There are children that we would call prodigal children because they're on the run. But I'm praying for the prodigal child right now. Even though that prodigal child may be 30 and 40 and 20 years old, I'm praying for that prodigal child. Even though other people may forget God has not forgotten. I think sometimes we've gotten to the point of prayer where it just feels like, God, do you hear me? Have you forgotten? He has not. His ways are much higher, much greater. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you right now that you are the God of breakthrough. <laughs> 
that you are the God of the miraculous, that you are the God of signs and wonders. Lord, that you knock those walls down before a single sword was raised. You brought the walls down. Lord, I stand on your word right now and I'm believing that's my cry right now. Lord, that that shofar warfare, that as the trumpets, as the ram's horn, they sang out, they rang out, God, there was victory shouting. I believe that right now, that that's the cry, that when our worship and our praise goes up, your presence comes down in such a real, powerful, and tangible way, God. Lord, that you hear the prayers of your people, and I'm praying right now, Lord, the breakthrough in Jesus' name. Lord, that there would be a persistent faith in the house of God right now. That maybe somebody's here today and they were forced here. But after today, that, that you will stir their hearts in such a way that it wouldn't be in, in the eloquence of any person's speech. That it wouldn't be in the, the talents of any gifts and song. But it would be in the power and in the demonstration of your spirit to transform a heart from the inside out. Lord, we believe for breakthrough right now in Jesus' name, for a persistent faith, for a strength that is beyond our own, for a strength that is greater in our weakness, for a dependency only in you, for words, God, that would transform, that would change and be life-giving. for a transformation in our community, in our marriages, in our families, in our children, for miracles, God, in Jesus' name. For walls to come down, in Jesus' name. Father, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus name I just want to ask I believe I believe in the power of symbolism I believe in the work of a declaration I believe that in one moment, in one second, God can change things in your life forever. And on that seventh day, as the trumpets rang out, the Lord told Joshua to tell the people that there would be a great scream, that there would be this great shout unto the Lord, this shout of victory. And so I just want to ask right now, whatever it is that you're needing breakthrough, if you're here today and you're like, all right, I was about to give up. I was that guy that needed to persist. I was that guy that needed to persevere in my faith. If you can write, if you believe this, if together I'm going to count to three. If that's you, if we could just give a great shout of praise to God, a declaration of our faith. You do it to the football screen. You do it to the children and dance. You do it during baseball and softball. Can we do it unto the Lord with a, a great declaration, a cry of faith that shouts out, God, you are capable. Can we just, whatever it is, Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you. Are you ready, church? One. Two. Three. We thank you, Father. Because you are faithful, God. Because you are faithful. We thank you that you are Father. And we are your children. That you've given us a spirit of sonship. That you've placed victory in our hearts. Not just perseverance. But victory in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. That you are the good Father. That you love your children. That you made a way where there seemed to be no way. That you're above the addiction. That you're above the depression. That you're above the resistance. That you're above the opposition. 
that you're above the walls and you're raising our perspective. You're raising our faith in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus, that you gave your, your life, yourself, for us, that you became the sacrifice. We thank you that you who knew no sin became sin on our behalf so that we could be set free. We thank you for your joy. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your love and for your grace, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, that you are the comforter, that you are the helper. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church, we love you. God bless you. Have a great week.